All right, everyone, we're back. It's Ross with the, the Flavors of Figs here. And uh, I just want to thank everybody who contacted me and um, commented on the video, the previous video, uh, that the audio cut out on the previous video of this particular subject. And I was, uh, as I was saying in the previous video, is that I'm really passionate about this topic. And um, it's just something I think about a lot. Um, I don't really have a amazing palette, and I don't think you really need to. I think this is quite simple. I'm trying to make the flavor groups of figs very simple. And for those of you who have never had a fig, um, welcome to my channel. Um, this is a really interesting fruit, in my opinion. I think there's a couple fruits out there, uh, like bananas and mangoes, and figs, of course, that have just very interesting flavors to them outside of the normal varieties that we see in the store so like a banana as an example the the only banana we see in stores outside of maybe an asian grocery store here in the united states is the cavendish the cavendish banana and the cavendish banana is quite bland um lots of people love it it's one of the most popular fruits in america apples and bananas which is surprising because there's so many better bananas out there, it's actually incredible. Um, so if you really like bananas, you should do some research and um, figure out what other bananas there are out there. Maybe try to grow one yourself. They're not that difficult to grow, especially if you live somewhere pretty warm. But back to figs, I think figs are very similar in that aspect, that they have a wide variety of flavors to them. Um, they're very, some of them are very unique. Uh, they have different textures to them. Um, but I think the most important thing to understand first when you're trying to, as a collector or a hobbyist, trying to understand the next variety you should grow. So I like to make recommendations to people, one, based off their climate, because you don't want to grow a, a piece of fruit or a fruit tree in your climate when it really doesn't do well there. We're lucky here in Pennsylvania in Zone 7 that figs, even though they are a subtropical species, Ficus carica, actually is quite hardy. Um, and people have successfully grown them outdoors in zones 5, all the way down to zones 5. Um, not recommending you do that in zone 5, but I will say that it's, it's possible and it's worth it here um, because there's very specific varieties that will do better in your particular climate. So um, even like in California, you could make some certain recommendations to people um, based on variety. Um, but past that, I think it's more important to even look at the flavors of these figs because there's many different flavors. Um, and say you might have, you know, in the category right here, if you look at my mouse, you might have a berry fig and you've been eating a berry fig your entire life. Maybe you grew up with um, a fig tree in your backyard and you had a Black Mission style fig in your backyard. Black Mission is a berry fig. Maybe you had the same, maybe you had the opposite, and you had a honey fig in your backyard, and you're just somebody that's maybe trying to grow a different variety or maybe just get a better understanding of this whole subject, and you're gonna wanna try a different flavor. And I've basically broken down the different flavors into three main categories which is sugar, honey, and berry. And some of these categories, so there's honey, berry, light berry, and tropical, which I've kind of made into subcategories of the three main categories, sugar, honey, and berry. Now, before I really get into the details of each category, I think it's really important to understand a couple things about figs, especially flavors of figs. One, and the most important thing you, you need to understand about figs is that the flavor of a fig will dramatically change based off a few different factors. And I'm talking about dramatic. So one and probably the most dramatic is how long you let your figs ripen on the tree. If you pick your fig one day earlier um, than you would have, you're going to lose out on some flavors. One day actually makes a huge difference in when you pick your figs um, in terms of the flavor. So 
that's one. Um, you know, just the, the basis behind that real quick is that the longer it hangs on the tree, the more sugars the plant can uptake and then put into that piece of fruit. And the, the more sugars, the more nutrients, the more flavor the, uh, the fig is going to have. Um, that's just the basics of it. Um, then the other, one of the most important things about the flavors is that if you live somewhere very warm, you live somewhere very sunny, um, so if you're growing figs in California versus here in Pennsylvania, the fruit quality of your figs in California is going to be astronomically higher. If you were to take the bricks, a bricks reading, which is the sweetness, the sugar reading, um, usually very much so correlates to the quality of the fruit. If you were to take the bricks of the fruit grown in California and the bricks grown uh, of the fruit in Pennsylvania, it's really night and day. So you know, by them having more sunlight, they're actually being able to uptake more sugars. The plants are uptaking more sugars, having more heat. Um, the plants and the figs just ripen much quicker, much uh, better. It's a native climate to figs. Figs are not supposed to be grown in zone seven, uh, even in wet climates, which brings me to my other point, is that uh, figs really do not do well with lots of water. And for me, someone that grows figs in zone seven, um, and this is all in the notes here, on the side here of the spreadsheet, um, but for me, so that someone grows in zone seven, is that we get 40 inches of rain here in the Northeast. Um, depending on where you live, you can get more or less, but 40 inches of rain is a lot. We live in a very temperate climate and Figs really come from a subtropical dry area. That's where they're native. And they don't really like to be growing in, they love water. In fact, they love water so much that what they do is with the water is that they grow so much and put out less fruit. But um, what ends up happening is if you water your, your trees too much, so me as an example, 40 inches of rain, I am never watering my fig trees in the ground because I want them to be at a point where the tree is being able to survive and grow and put out fruit, but I don't want to give it so much water that the tree is then uptaking that water because that's what trees do. They uptake water and then they release it through their leaves out into the atmosphere, which is great for the atmosphere and for our climate. Um, but then that water is then, a portion of that water is then put into each fruit. And that actually over kind of overwaters your figs and makes them very watery, makes them very bland, you're going to lose out on the sugars. They're actually going to spoil much quicker on the tree. You're not going to be able to let your figs ripen as longer. It's a huge mess. I don't recommend it. I've done it. I've experienced it firsthand. I know someone who lives in Texas and just gets unbelievable fruit quality because he grows all of his figs under a greenhouse and waters them to the point where he's just keeping them alive and that's it so that's that's the basis of getting the maximum flavor from your figs um and what will change them so you know the point i'm trying to make here is that if i am telling you that this particular fig like a black mission fig is a berry fig well maybe somebody in california who has much more heat much more sun actually might turn this fig into a honeyberry fig. The fig might be a berry fig and have some honey dripping from the eye. I've seen that um, even on my own Black Mission figs. It almost seems like they want to start putting out honey, but they don't because there's just something, some key point they're missing. But um, yeah, so that's, that's what I'm trying to get around your heads here. The other thing that before we get into this, the one other thing is that figs, they have an underlying flavor to them. And the underlying flavor is 100% melon. So every single fig, to my knowledge, will taste like a melon when it's underripe. Some figs, even when they're ripe, still taste like a melon. Um, there's very few that do that. That's kind of the sugar category. And if you have a melon flavored fig, uh, you can also consider that figgy because figgy essentially means what most figs taste like and most figs you get from the grocery store will actually have that melon flavor because they're so underripe they're picked so underripe so that they can ship them more easily 
have them last longer on the shelf and that's why you get the melon flavors of your figs when in reality is I don't prefer the melon flavor of my figs personally maybe you do I know there's a lot of people out there that do so don't be offended by me saying that but I personally don't like them because once the fig gets past that melon stage that melon flavor it then develops its true flavors of the fig and it, to me it's much more interesting because all the figs are essentially the same you know with very little nuances if I were to ripen my figs uh, really not to their maximum so if I were to pick my figs early every single time I would then get more and more similar figs I wouldn't be able to break down these categories as very as easily I wouldn't be able to give you these descriptions as easily because I wouldn't know I wouldn't be able to easily detect the differences some figs actually if you don't let them ripen long enough won't develop certain things like uh, this entire category here the honey berry category is a berry fig but if you let them ripen long enough they will develop honey so we're going to get into that but you're going to miss out on a, an entirely key characteristic of your fig if you don't let them ripen long enough okay so let's just get into it right here so the sugar we kind of we kind of cover this Sugar figs are, in my opinion, the least complex because they remind me so much so of every other fig. They are kind of just sweet, very simple like that. They also have the melon flavor like I was talking about, which is very much so uh, like cantaloupe or honeydew, something along those lines. And um, it's just boring, you know, and figgy, figgy could also mean different things to different people. To me, it means sort of like a Fig Newton it means kind of melony. It means just sweet, simple, bland. It's mild. You could eat a lot of these figs. You know, you could probably eat like 20 of them and not really have a sugar problem. Um, well, maybe you could, depending on the particular fig you ate. But uh, yeah, I mean, they're just very bland. And uh, it gets a little bit more interesting. And this is, can I go, just go back real quick? In this category is things like Brunswick, Magnolia, uh, Brown Turkey, um, Celeste. So you've got figs in this category that people really uh, have experienced more than other, f other varieties. These are the most common varieties in the United States. If you go to the south, even in, in, um, in like California, you're going to find lots of brown turkey trees. You're going to find lots of Celeste trees. You're going to find lots of Brunswick trees. And they're all really bland. <laughs> so if you had a fig of one of those three trees, uh, maybe if you're growing it in California, you probably are going to detect more flavors than someone would in the South. But if you're growing one of those three varieties, you have seriously, and you've only had those three varieties, or one of those three varieties, you seriously have not experienced almost anything in the world of fig uh, flavors. So the next category and a little bit more exciting is honey and the honey figs are very distinct looking. So uh, just like sugar, the sugar figs kind of have like a very distinct look to them. They're more of a brownish, uh, light pink, maybe a dark amber interior. Whereas the honey figs, it's very obvious to your eye. This is why I'm giving you the, the pictures of the figs with with the description because you can easily identify what a fig is going to taste like just by looking at it and some people might disagree with that statement but uh, nine times out of ten you're not going to be surprised by the taste so a honey fig that looks like this it has the amber color it has the yellowish color to it it's a green fig on the exterior or a yellow fig on the exterior it's going to be a honey fig and you're going to see the honey too. You can actually physically see the honey. So maybe honey is, a, is the incorrect term because honey is what bees make, but, um, it is some sort of nectar that the fig actually creates and the fig will drip honey. So sometimes, um, you'll see it glistening throughout the fig. You can see it here glistening. You can kind of see it glistening here. Sometimes it's pooled in the middle of the fig. So this is the 
the void of the fig. So see how this is a void, how this is dark and empty. Sometimes this void is filled with honey. You can see that glistening here. And then once it gets to the point where the fig is just so filled with honey, it actually can then push out of the fig's eye and form a drop of honey outside the eye, which is exactly what this is. Uh, and you're gonna see that every single time with honey figs. You're gonna see them, you're gonna see this color, you're gonna see the honey. Most of the time, the honey is gonna drip out of the eye of the fig. That's a really good indicator that the fig is ready. Um, but even if the eye is dripping out honey, it doesn't necessarily mean it's time, um, depending on the fig. So just a little bit of advice there. Um, then we got berry figs, which the honey figs to me is a step up from the sugar, but it's still quite bland and boring to me. It's just very sweet. So just to touch on the honey real quick, is that the honey figs are very, very sweet. Why are they sweet? Because if you were to just dump honey on something, don't you think it would be really sweet? That's the case here. So the fig has just uptake uptaken so many that's not even a word i'm sure but the fig has just taken up so many um, sugars and then made it into the form of honey in the fig that it's just so so sweet so if you're someone that has like a really big sweet tooth you like sweet stuff this is like the fig for you berry i believe in my opinion is the complete opposite so now we're getting more into a mild sweetness um, and when I say berry, and when you hear the word berry in terms of figs, most people are referring to a strawberry, a strawberry flavor. And uh, berry can be so complex, you can have so many different berry flavors to them that some of them taste like wine, um, like a really old wine. You can get like a Bordeaux styled fig, a Violet de Bordeaux. They named it after that area of France but I really have a feeling that the wine and the figs are kind of synonymous with that type of um, that type of flavor uh, then you have certain figs that certain berry figs that can taste like raspberries you could taste like uh, blackberries taste like any kind of berry I mean I've tasted figs that kind of taste like grapes it tastes like strawberries that some of the figs are actually named after raspberries. There's one called Raspberry El Molino. There's one called Raspberry Latte. Um, there isn't one with the name of a blackberry, but I would think if you could think hard enough on the flavors of these, um, you'll see some very interesting berry flavors. And within this, within this uh, berry category, it gets very interesting with many different types of berry. And we're going to get to that. Um, sometimes it can be acidic. I just want to point that out. Uh, so far, the sugar figs and the honey figs really are almost never acidic. So if you're looking for something that has like that acid sweet balance to it, which a lot of people enjoy, um, berry figs are your, you're going to be your favorite. And that's exactly why they are people's favorites. If you were to poll... Uh, the fig community, lots of crazy fig collectors, fig hobbyists uh, that have tried many, many, many different varieties of figs. You would find, on average, I know that there's some of you guys out there that like the honey and the sugar figs more, but on average, I would just assume that um, people like berry figs the most. And I think that's why, because they kind of have a little bit more of a complex flavor and some of them actually can get slightly acidic and sweet to have a, um, a really nice blend there. Uh, then we get to the honeyberry category, which is very simple because we talked about the honey category, we talked about the berry category. Honeyberry is essentially a berry fig that also produces honey. And uh, this actually is probably what people would refer to as the premier category. This is like the top of the line figs. Uh, why? Because they have the complexity of the berry figs, but they also have the sweetness of the honey figs because there's honey, there's nectar in the figs that are making the, the berry fig very sweet. So you get like usually 
like a black Madeira or a Smith, which is two of my favorite varieties, you would get something like, or even Azores Dark or Malta Black, you would get the, the berry flavor first, or maybe you get the honey first. So you get the very nice honey sweetness. And then you would be followed up by a really nice and interesting, refreshing berry flavor comp that's complex. And the more complex the berry flavor gets, uh, the more honey there is. Usually, that correlates to um, a top-of-the-line variety. So if somebody really, really wants to find the best variety out there, which Black Madeira is considered by many to be the best, the best. I would probably disagree, and there's got to be something out there better. Maybe Italian 258, which is a very similar fig to that, could uh, take that spot. Um, I don't know for sure myself. I couldn't give you an opinion myself, but um, that would be probably the criteria is to determine which of the two has a stronger and more complex berry flavor to it. And then which of the two is more sweeter? So um, I think that's really the, the basics there and breaking down what people are saying. When people are very, you know, having a very hard time describing the flavors of figs, describing, um, I don't know, describing the indescribable flavors. Uh, they're just like, oh my God, Black Widow is so good, but I don't know why, I just know it's good. <laughs> Um, that's really all it is. It's just it has a complex berry flavor, and has a lot of honey. That's that's it. That's the that is it. That is a fig. That is the the most hype of any fig you're gonna find. It's that it's gonna be super complex berry, with uh, with a lot of honey. That's it. That's the that's the hype. That's the craziness that people are willing to pay for some of these figs. That's it. And some of them don't even have that. Some of them will not even be a honeyberry fig. Some of them might just be a berry. Some of them might just be a honey. And there's people paying obscene amounts of money for them. Not to say that honey figs and berry figs and sugar figs aren't good, but um, to command the prices uh, that some of these figs have have reached is just insane. Um, that's the fig community for you. But then you got light berry, which I think is the most interesting category to myself because I think it's the most misunderstood category it's also one of the tastier categories i think i enjoy this category more than berry but less than honeyberry and um the figs in this category i originally had a category i was trying to make this more simple and i had this really just wide and drawn out um many different categories I even had a category called exotic, which I didn't fully understand at the time, but now I do. They're not really exotic. They're just honey and berry, <laughs> like I described before. Um, but light berry is kind of a combination of sugar plus berry. There's also a category, which I don't have listed here, uh, called sugar plus honey. And I've just assigned all those sugar honey figs to the sugar category. So as an example, in Prue Celeste, is very sweet it's a very very sweet fig but it's just a simple it's a simply sweet fig there's nothing more to it than that um, it's a simply sweet fig that gets honey in the eye uh, and throughout which makes it very sweet this is actually an improved Celeste this particular fig you can't see it but on the other fig here that's cut off actually has honey in it um, and at the eye it did have honey at the eye when I ate this particular fig here it's very sweet. Uh, the light berry figs don't have any honey, but they do have the, the sweetness of the sugar figs combined with the berry flavor of berries, of the berry figs. So here's what I'm getting at, right? The berry figs are very, they're not very sweet. They're very low on the sweetness scale. They're more interesting than anything. They're like eating a... Uh, like a grape, uh, like a very mild, refreshing grape, um, or maybe a very intense grape, depending on the intensity of it. It's Grapes are not very sweet, to me anyway. But if you were to take something very sweet, like a sugar fig, uh, and then you were to combine that with the light berry figs, or with a berry fig, you would get light berry. 
So it's like a, a, mu a sweeter version, in my opinion, a sweeter version of berry. Uh, and usually you have a less intense, a more mild, refreshing version of berry, but it's sweeter. If that makes any sense. It's kind of interesting to me. So it's very fruity. Um, the problem, though, with this category, I think that it's so misunderstood because people don't ripen their figs long enough. And this is a fig here that's pictured called Suwadi. And Suwadi is a Middle Eastern fig, and Suwadi actually uh, doesn't get the berry flavor to it unless you really, really let it ripen. I mean, I let this fig hang for like, I don't know, 12 to 15 days before I pick it. So the fig has already swelled. And from the time it swelled to the time I pick it is about 12 to 15 days. It actually almost dries in the tree for me. It does semi-dry on the tree for me. Um, and that's why it gets that berry flavor. Otherwise, it would just be a simply sweet and boring sugar fig. The same thing with the rest of these. Uh, Floria, there's a lot of mixed reviews on Floria. But if you were to let Floria ripen very, very long, you would get the berry flavor and it would be much, much more interesting. Um, then we get to a, a category called tropical. This is the last category in my mind. Um, tropical is just a offset of berry, uh, a subcategory of berry uh, that has like very tropical flavors to it, actually. Uh, it could be like tangy and citrusy. Um, this is a fig here called Hative de Argentile. It's a French fig, I believe. Um, and the French, this particular fig that I ate actually reminded me of pineapple and some kind of tropical flavors to it. It was so strange. And I did some research, found that Flanders when grown in California, and I'm also testing it here. I haven't, I haven't gotten a fully ripe Flanders to try myself. Uh, I have gotten some Flanders, but they weren't perfect. But I believe that Flanders has also a tropical flavor to it. Uh, Flanders does have some honey in it as well. So it's a honey and a berry fig, but the berry is tropical. Also, Soda Sicilian is another one that people are describing as a caramelized peach, which is very different than um, the usual berry flavor that people are used to. So that covers my uh, flavors of categories. But then if I were to go to um, mountainfigs.net, which is one of my friends, a very good friend of mine, and I were to go to, uh, he also sells things, by the way. He sells cuttings, and I think he's trying to sell fruit to, um, to local restaurants at some point. But he sells really great cuttings at a very cheap price. He knows his stuff. I mean, um, Tony's really a, a, a fig hobbyist, true in heart. Um, really great person to deal with. So if you're trying to look for cuttings, I'd recommend going to his website here and trying to get some cuttings from him. He really knows his stuff. And he has here the same thing, um, a similar chart to mine on uh, the flavors of figs. And you can see here, let's just, let's just look at his chart and kind of break this down, how he has differences. Um, so the, he has agave, so like in his honey, category so i have honey figs he also has honey figs but he has broken down his honey figs into another subcategory called agave and he thinks they have more of an agave honey flavor to them rather than a, a honey like a bee's honey uh flavor to them interesting um then he also has the sugar figs like i mentioned but then he has some figs that have like a caramel brown sugar taste to them which I also have, I would agree with him. Um, I haven't tasted the agave honey flavor of some of my honey figs yet, but I do agree that there are some uh, caramel and brown sugar notes in the sugar figs. He also has sugar berry here, which is my light ber berry category, just renamed, slightly different. He also has honey berry, which is the honey plus is the, uh, plus the berries. And then you get a lot really interesting here where he has four different uh, subsets of berry and um, I also can agree with him here uh, there is definitely a difference in the resin berry as he calls it Bordeaux 
So like Violet de Bordeaux, Black Mission Figs really have this type of berry to them. Then you get to Punchberry, which is like the, the hardy Chicago types. Uh, and Sultane, in my opinion. Sultane is another one, which kind of is very fruity. It really tastes like a strawberry to me. Then you get to uh, Citric Berry, which is really, uh, in my opinion, the most interesting berry. It's by far the one that tastes more like a wine. Um, these are the cold Adama figs. So the cold Adama figs are the ones from Spain that take a long time to ripen. But they're very, very high quality figs. The Queen of Spain eats them to this day. <laughs> most people, most of the royalty of Spain ate those figs for, for uh, a couple hundred years, I would, I would think. Um, there's also like Verte and Adriatic, which is um, very popular green skin figs with a very deep dark red interior, which I think they have a very similar flavor to the Cold Adams. And they all get that really interesting, whiny, smooth berry flavor to them that's really interesting. Um, I think that's the most interesting to me, that particular berry. Then you have the tannic berry, as he calls it, which I've described to you guys in videos and I've described in text to people on the community. I've tried to convey this to people is that things like white triana and atriano and uh, canadria is a couple of them. There's like, I would say there's about 15 figs minimum in this category that have this type of berry to them. They also, they also have. Um, honey to them if you let them ripen for a very long time and this is the key to this particular set here this tannic berry category is that um, if you really don't let them ripen you can actually mistake them for a honey fig you can mistake them for a sugar fig uh, they don't really get much flavor to them if you overwater them they're very prone to being overwatered this is a very misunderstood category in the world of figs I think um, but if you let them really ripen, you let them uh, hang for a long time, uh, you'll see that they get like a interesting color to them, actually. It's really like a dark pink. It's not really red at that point. Uh, maybe it's a light red, but it's still a dark, it's like a dark color to it. And they get filled with honey and they just have the most interesting berry flavor to them that you, you won't find in a normal berry fig yet it is a berry fig so it's in my in my mind it's it's very interesting it's a very underrated category of figs and if i were to go i could show you guys a picture of it um let's see here if i go to my channel and i were to go to uh let's see if i type in canadria i had a brava that was the size of a damn tennis ball Let's give it a try right now, six and a half so, hours in. Here's me, I dried it here. But here's the fig, actually, what I'm talking about, how it's this dark, interesting color. It may not look too appetizing, but it does have that really interesting flavor to it. It's really indescribable, this one right here, um, other than it just being berry. So... Anyway, guys, that's what I wanted to cover today. Uh, I hope I got this through to you. Um, I hope this is making a lot more sense now. This isn't so much of a mystery because that's kind of what it's been for years in the fig community. No one's been able to accurately depict this to people. And I hope that this video has accomplished that. Um, really, though, if you wanted to find out the flavor of, of a fig, looking at the interior color is really going to tell you a lot. So that's one tip. Uh, another tip is that I would just mention that um, those three things that I mentioned in the beginning of the video, so don't overwater your figs, put them in as much sunlight, give them as much heat as you can, and let them ripen for a long time, and you're going to get the flavors that I'm talking about here. So, um, yeah, take care, guys. hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you next time.